Welcome to a Hyung Min Son special. What an unbelievable servant and legend that man has been and continues to be for Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. He's just hit 400 appearances, he scored over 150 goals, he's the captain of our club and he's just been nominated for a big award. More on that later but let's get started with why I want to talk about Sonny so much today and I want to start with his captaincy. I've been so impressed all season, not just with his performances on the pitch, he scored 15 Premier League goals after a disappointing season last season where some people were beginning to write him off, suggesting that maybe his legs had gone. But no, he's proven they haven't this season. But more than that, when taking on the armband, he is now showing what a brilliant leader he is on the pitch, but also off the pitch. And this week is a good example. He has spoken up about two players who have been under fire from a corner of the Spurs fan base. I'm talking about Timo Werner and Brennan Johnson. And for me, that shows unbelievable captaincy. So let's talk a little bit about the quotes that he said on uh, in favour of Werner and Johnson. He says, The way we approach the game, the wingers are very important, staying wide and being in the right position. And Timo and Brennan are doing a great job, both understanding each other's roles. When he came to Tottenham, he's talking about Timo now, he was missing a little bit of confidence, but now you can see he's playing with confidence and is more comfortable. Sure, missing a few chances, but that will come. He's doing a great job, but as I always said, he's a golden boot winner in the Bundesliga and we expect he'll score and give assists more for the team because we have massive games ahead. I always want to make good friends and good teammates, but in football there are no guarantees and the club will make a decision. But Timo would happily stay here, I can see that. As a player, I want to help him so he can continue to get better. That is a teammate's job. We'll see what's going to happen at the end of the season. So a lot of that is really about Werner, and it's Werner who's been getting most of the criticism from the Spurs fan base. And look, can I see both sides of the coin? Of course I can. He's missed a couple of guilt edge chances, two or three at least actually, uh, especially that one at the back stick against Fulham. That will live on in the memory. However, it's more important to me, and yes, I'll be accused of being a happy clapper and too positive, but it's more important to me that Werner continues to get in the right positions. And he really does. And let's not forget the other night, he set up that goal for Brennan Johnson beautifully. That was Ange Ball at its best, at its most potent. One forward, out wide, getting to the byline, crossing for the other forward to come on in. And that's why Johnson started that game, because Kulisewski, I think, has been frustrating Ange a little bit with his inability to have the pace to come on in for those balls that are getting across from the left-hand side. So, Sonny, unbelievable captaincy, I think, here. Not just saying, I think it'll come good or I think he's a good player, but really going into detail about how talented Timo Werner is, how good they've played when they've been on the same park together, that being Werner and Johnson. And really, I think in public, trying to boost Werner's confidence. You can really see with Timo Werner that there's such a player there. But clearly, from his time at Chelsea, his confidence has just been battered into the ground because people now expect him to miss every chance. Remember that chance uh, against West Ham where he got onto his left-hand side and just put it wide? Uh... Actually, was that a West Ham? I think it may have been one of the last two games anyway. He took it on his left side and just put it wide. I think it was the game before against Luton. He got in the right position. He beat the man and it was just that finish that was disappointing. I actually think if he'd been in a confident state of play, he would have maybe run around that and bent it into the far corner with his right foot. But he snatched it a little bit. Maybe he had to. But I think, personally, if we stick with him, and if we buy him as a squad player, not as a first-team starter, but as a squad player who, when next season, will have lots of European games, if we buy him for that £15 million, I think he will be a very important squad player for Spurs. Let me know in the comments what you think about Werner. Am I being naive? Am I being unrealistic? I personally don't think we'll get anything better than him as a squad depth player for the money that he is available for. Next bit of Spurs news today. As you'll know by now, the accounts came out and by all opinions, it seems to be a very positive thing for Spurs. However, what has also come out is that although we have the ability to spend money, the actual cash reserves aren't there. And as a result, Daniel Levy says he is in talks with people about potential investment, i.e. giving off, I, I guess similar to what Manchester United have done with Ineos, giving off a percentage of the club to allow investment and cash to come into the club to 
uh, help with the remaining projects that we have to build, which will be the hotel. Some people are complaining about the news that the hotel has just got planning permission. For anyone who doesn't know, Spurs, when they started the Northumberland Development Project, which was in 2008, which was the whole regeneration of Tottenham High Road around the stadium, including the building of the multi-use new stadium, there were always plans to build a hotel there as well as uh, apartments, some affordable apartments and some obviously not affordable apartments. Well, all that's happened in the last week or two is that those uh, secondary projects, the hotel and the apartments, have been given planning permission and so they want to get going with that stage of the project. However, as Levy has said in these accounts, the kind of cash actually isn't there to do that or necessarily to really spend on players at the moment. So he's looking for investment. And the rumours coming out of some of the tabloid press this week is that there are American investment companies circling. The quote that Daniel Levy said in terms of this in the uh, accounts that came out earlier this week was to capitalise on our long term potential, by which he means the ability we have to spend money if we had it. Uh, he says the club requires a significant increase in its equity base, cash. The board and its advisors, Rothschild and Co., are in discussions with prospective investors. And the Mail Sport have come out and said that it's particularly at the moment American companies, American investors who are interested. Uh, the Qatari Sports Group were interested previously, apparently, but now they're turning their mind to more like Motor GP, I think, probably because of the success of Drive to Survive on Netflix and motorsport is in a, in a real resurgence. So let me know in the comments what you think about the possibility of Spurs having a kind of Ineos esque, maybe. 15, 20, 25% investment, allowing us to uh, build our equity base to then spend money, not just on the uh, the projects like the hotel and the apartments, but also to spend more money for the first team. Because as the, uh, the accounts have shown, the amount of revenue that Spurs get is so huge that it enables us to spend money on players. It's just that in the current climate where we don't have that equity base currently, they need some investment to do it. Let me know what you think of that. Next up, I want to talk about another captain of our side, one of our vice captains, Christian Romero. And he has come out and talked about Richarlison. Now, let's not forget Romero, Argentinian, Richarlison, Brazilian. Before uh, Richarlison came to Spurs, they'd had a few set twos in Everton versus Tottenham games. And famously, Argentinian players and Brazilian players don't really get on. However, Romero has come out and shown his captaincy as well by talking in the press about Richarlison and supporting him. He said, I know he had a bad time, but we talk all the time. Really positive. I love that. He says, I know he didn't have the best time. He had some personal problems, but the important thing is that he is well happy. I see him very well. He had suffered an injury. He's coming back little by little. And for us, he is a very important player. Until he got injured, he was at a great level. That's completely true. Let's not forget, he scored those 10 in 11 or 9 in 11. Unbelievable form. Romero goes on. I want him to be fine. He's a great boy. I hope the personal situations that caused him to have a bad time will settle down. Football is the least of it. Let's hope he is well. Let's hope he continues like this. I love that from Romero. Another player who's very much an alpha within the squad, talking about the importance, or at least alluding to the importance of mental health there. And I love the support that he's showing his teammate Richarlison. And I do think that Richarlison could well get back in the team as a nine over the next few games, with maybe Sonny pushing out left uh, and give us more options in terms of getting balls into the box crossing. Because if you saw that West Ham game, we only really put one ball into the box in the air in the whole game. It was in the last few minutes. Kulisevsky crossed it in. West Ham didn't deal with it and that set up the chance for Destiny or Doggy and unfortunately it went straight down Fabianski's throat. So maybe Richarlison can give us a little bit more options in the next few games now that his knee injury hopefully is sorting itself up. So I said at the beginning this is a Sonny special. He's reached 400 caps. What an absolute legend. Uh, I'm going to read you some of the things that some of his teammates have said about him uh, in a second. But first up, this is what Sonny said about his pride at winning 400 caps. He said, 400 appearances at our club is a really special milestone and a really proud feeling for me and my family. Last night was not the result that we wanted, talking about the draw at West Ham. But to look back on this time so far with you all, I feel a feeling of joy and pride. I'm so thankful for you all for making London my second home. Well, we all love you, Sonny, as do your teammates. Ben Davis started with a good uh, story. He said, I remember when Sonny first arrived at Spurs, this excited guy who brought an energy to the team with his sheer enthusiasm for football. Then he showed us that incredible technique, left foot, 
right foot, the way he finished off both, so he stood out straight away. The first year was challenging for Sonny, but he always seemed to have an impact, and he's just grown and grown over the years. As captain of South Korea, and now Spurs this season, he leads by example. Everything he does is for the good of the team, always striving to be better with his attitude, mindset and determination. He takes all that responsibility when he steps out onto the pitch and as a figurehead for both teams, he sets the standard every day. What a lovely, lovely way of talking from Ben Davis about his captain. And as we heard last week, Sonny is actually the godfather of Ben Davis's child. So I love that about Spurs. I love it when the... Uh, the team show that bond. I think it's massive and I really feel like we're moving towards those years again when Pochettino was in charge and the players just all loved each other and I feel like we've got that bond again. James Madison on Instagram said, 400 up. Pleasure to share the pitch with you and call you my friend. Love you, brother. That was about Sonny. Love that for Madders. Brennan Johnson, even more pithy. 400 up for the GOAT. Congrats, Sonny. And Harry Kane replied to Sonny's Instagram post saying, congrats, brother, with a heart emoji uh final piece of news today big Ange postacoglu has been nominated for man of the manager of the month and this would not be the sonny special without saying as well that sonny has been nominated for player of the month he's just scored his 15th league goal i think it is what a season he's had as captain what a player he is as i've said a few times sign him up to a 10-year contract make him an ambassador after he finishes playing keep him at the club forever what an absolute genius Son Heung Min is. Guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. If you are listening on the podcast platform, please do go to YouTube, youtube.com forward slash at Barnaby Slater underscore. Drop me a subscribe and a like and vice versa. If you're watching on YouTube, it really helps me if you follow and subscribe on uh, Apple Podcasts or Spotify as well. And of course, you can become a Spurred On Pro member or Patreon member. Only a pound a month really supports me to make this daily content for you guys. All the details in the description box below. But most importantly, come on you Spurs.